Over the centuries, many animals have grown extinct due to a steady decline in their population, and a number of animals that have joined that list most recently is the splendid poison frog, Chinese river dolphin, Spix's macaw, and the Lake Lanao freshwater fish, just to name a few. The Tasmanian tiger has been extinct for over a century now. Is it possible to bring the cat back to life? Can extinct animals walk the face of the earth again? Join us as we discuss the de-extinction of the Tasmanian tiger. The Tasmanian tiger, also known as the Tasmanian wolf or thylacine, is the largest carnivorous marsupial of recent times, but it was presumed extinct soon after the last captive individual died in 1936. But even before the Tasmanian tiger was hunted to extinction, there are other animals that were just as important to the ecosystem and biodiversity of the earth and are no longer with us. An example is the dodo. The dodo bird is one of the most famous examples of human-induced extinction. It was a large, flightless bird that was once native to the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. It had blue-grey feathers, a large head and beak, and small, pretty much useless wings. Although the birds were terrestrial, their bone structure was hollow, like that of birds that fly. Dodos likely nested on the ground, and it's thought that they laid a single egg. The species were discovered by Portuguese sailors around 1507, and unfortunately, less than 200 years later, they were all gone hunted down to the last dodo, mainly by people. The dodo was an easy game for the Portuguese sailors and others to come, so quickly decimated the dodo population as an easy source of fresh meat for their voyagers. The dodo weighed about 23 kilograms. That's bigger than a turkey! As humans settled on the island, the birds were gradually losing their habitats and this was already threatening their population. Plus, the birds had no natural predators, so they were unafraid of humans. But these sailors also brought animals such as pigs and monkeys that would not hesitate to eat the vulnerable eggs and compete with the dodos for food. There was no doubt the dodos were over-harvested, combined with a loss of habitat and a losing competition with the newly introduced animals. This was all too much for the dodos to survive. The last dodo was killed way back 1681, and the species was lost forever to extinction. Dodos have been extinct for centuries, but even more recently is the Chinese river dolphin, the Beiji. The Beiji represented a unique branch of evolutionary history for whales, dolphins and porpoises, since it was the only living representative of the family Lipotidae. This means that the loss of the Beiji, an evolutionary distinct dolphin with no close relatives, is the loss of an entire family of mammals. Obviously, the impact of the huge loss to biodiversity cannot be understated. Before China's industrialization in the 1950s, there were an estimated 6,000 Beiji living in the Yangtze's thriving ecosystem. They migrated up and downstream. By the mid-1980s, surveys revealed that only an estimated few hundred Beiji are still alive. By 1990, the Beiji were critically endangered. There were only thought to be 100 left, and it was in 1997 that we realized only 13 of them were left. The nosedive in Beiji numbers was so sudden and shocking, but the primary factor driving this decline was probably unsustainable bycatch in local fisheries, particularly rolling hook long lines, together with wider-scale habitat degradation and pollution. Early on in the industrialization process, Beijis were hunted for meat, oil and leather. Human development along the river was intense and rapid. It's believed that a whopping 10% of all the humans in the world live in the Yangtze Basin today, so the massive scale of the impact that we have had on the environment is a testimony to that. The Yangtze is intensely used. It's a busy waterway, used by thousands of large transport vessels at any one time, so it's heavily contaminated with oil, plastics and sewage. Not to mention that it's usually dredged for building materials and constantly being further developed for hydroelectric power and bridge building. No doubt, the Three Gorges Dam was the last straw for the Beiji. This made sure that the natural Yangtze ecosystem has gone forever. However, it was artisanal overfishing activities which were unselective and downright irresponsible that are primarily to blame for the Beiji's extinction. Even the Tasmanian tiger was hunted into extinction. Why? You may wonder. Well, it was widely hunted in Tasmania by European settlers because it was considered a threat to the domestic sheep introduced to the island. Only that they went too far. It was rare by 1914, and the last known living specimen died in a private zoo in Hobart in 1936. 
Its disappearance from the wild came perhaps two years later. Several population surveys conducted by naturalists and wildlife officials between 1937 and 2008 failed to observe a single specimen. So how is it possible that the slender fox-faced marsupial can walk the face of the earth again? Well, during the late 1990s and early 2000s, DNA sequencing technologies made significant advancements. In 2009, an international team of geneticists announced that they had successfully sequenced the genome, that is, the complete set of DNA of the Tasmanian tiger. This development spawned discussions about the possibility of cloning the extinct animal, possibly through the process of somatic cell nuclear transfer, or SCNT for short. SCNT involved the transplanting of the nucleus of a somatic cell that is, a body cell, from a Tasmanian tiger into the cytoplasm of a donor egg, perhaps from the Tasmanian devil with the scientific name Sacrophilus harrisi or the native cat Dasiurus, whose nucleus has been removed. The genetic engineering company Colossal is already leading the pack in the resurrection of the Tasmanian wolf, in addition to bringing back the great mammals of old, the woolly mammoth. Teaming up with Colossal Laboratories and Biosciences to bring back the Tasmanian Tiger is the University of Melbourne's Thylacine Integrated Genetic Restoration Research or TIGRR lab. Scientists will use CRISPR gene editing technology and the Tiger Lab's complete Tasmanian Tiger genome from a preserved specimen to eventually create an embryo. The lab has also identified other surviving mammals with similar DNA to provide needed cells for the process. For the Tasmanian tiger, the ultimate goal is to re-establish it on the island of Tasmania, also the home of another endangered species, the Tasmanian devil, located off the southeast tip of Australia. The professor overseeing the tiger lab, Andrew Pask, wrote in a description of the project on the university's website, With this partnership, I now believe that in 10 years' time, we could have our first living baby thylacines since they were hunted to extinction close to a century ago. In the university's online journal, Pursuit, the professor also said, Had the tiger not been killed off, the predator threatened sheep and livestock, it could have helped prevent the spread of a facial tumor disease that is eliminating the Tasmanian devil population. Now that he has joined Colossal's scientific advisory board, Pask adds, If we look at the modern-day habitat in Tasmania, it has remained relatively unchanged. This means it provides the perfect environment to reintroduce the thylacine, enabling it to reoccupy its niche. The genetic engineering company grabbed the headlines last year when it announced plans to bring back the woolly mammoth by using elephant DNA. Colossal CEO and co-founder Ben Lam had this to say. Some people classify us as a mammoth company, but we're really a de-extinction company, so our goal is to focus on bringing back species that have a positive impact on various ecosystems, and the Tasmanian tiger is definitely one of those species. In other news, researchers at the University of Copenhagen and Shantou University in China recently revealed plans to resurrect a smaller mammal, the Christmas Island Rat. This show's efforts are intensifying, and we could have these creatures back in the ecosystem in no time. The Tasmanian tiger was more of a threat to lambs, but not really in a way that disturbs the balance of nature, since they typically grew to just 20 to 27 inches tall and 39 to 51 inches in length, weighing as much as 65 pounds. They could run as fast as 24 miles per hour and fed on birds, lizards and small mammals. It had an iconic wolf or dog-like appearance, often described as a long dog with stripes because it had a long, stiff tail and a big head, Pask said in pursuit. As a marsupial, the tiger's young would reside and suckle milk in the mother's pouch. That means an embryo can be implanted in a host species and when born can be bottle-fed. We can generate living animals in a range of host species and potentially without the need for a host at all, he said. Colossal has offices in Boston, Dallas and Austin, Texas. Maybe they'll bring the dodo back too and Thanksgiving will never be the same. Thanks for watching this video. Which extinct species would you rather not see alive again? Drop your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to smash that like button, share our video with your friends and family and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing content. See you on the next one. Until then, bye.